1996, you hear bits and pieces about this strange place, a lot of weird activity, UFO activity. So you go there, you buy it. Yeah. What, what was, what was your intention with the ranch? Well, first I, <clears throat> I, I, uh, I spent quite a bit of time talking to Terry Sherman. Um, he and his wife and two children lived there. Uh, he was the owner, and uh, they operated the ranch, and they raised cattle there, and they had a phenomenal uh, diversity of encounters. And I totally, I, I believe that this guy was a, was a squared away, um, he was a, a straight shooter, he, he wasn't uh, throwing baloney at me, <clears throat> and um, uh, these encounters were real. And uh, so he, he, was, he was in an exhausted situation. Um, his wife wound up getting fired from the bank uh, because it leaked out that these things were, were, they were preoccupied as a family and discussing these kinds of things once in a while with select people, thinking they could trust somebody, and these things were kind of happening, and it was like, gee, you know, these people are so weird, you better not get anywhere near them. And it cost her her job at the bank for no reason uh, other than this. And um, so <clears throat> Terry and I uh, made a deal and uh, providing he would stay on uh, because I needed somebody there. In addition, to, he had, uh, <clears throat> you know, he had backyard, literally, backyard knowledge of things. And so um, uh, he stayed on for, for quite a while. Whatever the intelligence is there, it's hard to categorize, right? <clears throat> I mean, you, you go in, I mean, you're initially attracted because you hear stories about flying saucers, then yeah. you realize it's a lot broader yeah. than that. Yeah. It's hard to figure out what it is, though, because it was so elusive. I know even now, after all the attention that's been given to it, people have a hard time buying the idea that something intelligent would would show you glimpses and not let you ever get your, your hands around it. Right. <clears throat> I, I did not uh, know with whom we were communicating. And uh, there are two choices, basically, uh, <clears throat> because <clears throat> of all the circumstances surrounding the different kinds of communications. So there weren't parochial answers. Um, <clears throat> it was either a discarnate, discarnate entities, non-human entities, or ETs. Well, we could just about eliminate everything else because <clears throat> it would be impossible. I mean, you can't be 500 miles away and make requests that things show up on a camera, and you have witnesses that are taking the pictures on the camera, and they they and you ask them, what is it that's that you're seeing in that camera? And they have no idea what to say because it's not something you've had any conversation with them about. And they're just describing you what it is. And it's exactly what you requested. And you do it again. And you do it again. And it's, just, and it's there are different kinds of things that are showing up is what you requested. And they're telling you this over the telephone. <clears throat> we had, we, we set up, um, we had uh, <clears throat> spontaneous uh, photos in different places. Um, and things would, would happen. There, there's no reason for photons to travel five feet and stop, you know, five or six feet. And everything is blacked out behind that because of what well, we don't know, but that's as far as the photons would travel. Or you're randomly taking pictures and you're capturing a nightstand right alongside the bed, and in that photo, something is lifting off. And it's changing hue and tone uh, and shades of color. <clears throat> it looks very mechanical, but it's hard to tell. There appears to be a, uh, not only the movement, it's, it's in an arc, but it is, <clears throat> it's a little blurry, like there's movement going on, but of course it's in, it, it is moving, but maybe there's something else happening too. And no, it wasn't a bird or a butterfly that was sitting there at that. It wasn't, it wasn't some kind of object like that, you know, because of the circumstances. Or you're taking pictures of, of uh, <clears throat> somebody, uh, you, you take pictures of 
rods flying past different color kinds of, of something tubular going by. Um, uh, you're taking pictures of where there's so many orbs around someone who is sick, legitimately ill, and, uh, and now they start feeling better and the camera is, is catching all this in multiple shots. And it's a cloud, there's, you can't count them. There's thousands and you can't, it's in a cloud formation and only on the periphery are you able to start to see some individual ones. It's, and it's all lit up. But your, your, other, your other photos before all that <clears throat> is darker than the aura outside. This is nighttime. And so there was a blackness that, that blocked out any kind of ambient light coming from the moon or some other, who knows what, uh, at that place, there weren't any other kinds of, uh, of normal light, so it had to have been probably moonlight. But the, there was a blackness like around you. There would be an outline, a, 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 a kind of a dark silhouette behind you that's blocking out the fact that you can see a tree trunk over here, but you can't see something else right next to you in between. So, and then the orbs all start coming in. So we had multiple different kinds of things. <clears throat> you know, we had the case where a camera's in view of another camera and that other camera is, is all disconnected. You know, <clears throat> the cable runs up uh, 30 feet to, to the telephone pole and every four feet on center, there is duct tape uh, binding the, the harnessing of the, of the cable together and then the cable goes through a, a steel box and there's knots tied inside so you can't just pull it back out of that box. And everything's all taken apart in full view of the other camera. And then you, but when you look at the footage, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. We couldn't see anything. You know, was, was that a message from the phenomenon of the intelligence? That <clears throat> how tired are you? There's, how tired are you hunting us? <clears throat> it's all about messaging. So it's all about games and gaming and messaging. In our case, we didn't have anybody hurt. There was an episode with, with the ranch manager after uh, uh, Terry. Uh, I hired some other folks, some some wonderful people, and. Um, he had a horse accident, but I, we don't know enough to make any uh, suppositions or claims or anything, uh, speculation about that. Um, but we never had anybody hurt on property that was, that was hurt, hurt, and uh, because of these events. Um, so, but it was all about, <clears throat> it was games, there was instructions through participating in games that we would set up. And we would verify the controls on those games could not have been manipulated by an, a human or person in the meantime. And it worked, though. I mean, something moved these things around. Oh, absolutely. And we took pictures, of course, before and after, and nobody else was, was able to do that, was around to do that, right? And, and the reestablishing of the game was better than we had set it up. There was more information being given by the way it was reconstituted than the way that we had established the game to begin with. Right? It's all about messaging. It was all about instructional kinds of things. Were you on the verge of communicating, you think, a couple times? I mean, it, there was back and forth, but you didn't really ever establish who you're communicating with. It finally got to where I, you know, from me personally, it was, I don't know how to, how to say that, because um, it sounds stupid. Um, but I've said a lot of stupid things, so I don't mind. Uh, you know, I got a little tired or bored because I wasn't making any progress of understanding the who. And all I could do, I could keep on asking for orbs and taking pictures and wherever I happened to be, not just at the ranch or other things. And a lot of people do that kind of thing. But also asking things to manifest on photos and being, making those requests and and I would be in Las Vegas, and they'd be at the ranch, and we'd be doing that back and forth and thing. Um, <clears throat> but be, you begin to say, okay, um, <clears throat> we don't know, as I said, with whom we were communicating, and uh, this could go on and on and on. Now, <clears throat> I'm not a, I've had to learn to acquire some patience, you know, I'm not a super patient guy, <laughs> but I'm trying to do my best, and. And, and work on that, and I'm better than I was. Um, but, um, but I probably needed to have a, have a lot more patience than what I did have. And um, 
and I probably got off on some other track, you know, distracted by something else, and just decided, well, um, you know, we were we were repeating a lot of things that was going on, and we weren't having craft manifest on the ranch uh, that was the full blown broad daylight kind of thing that happened with Terry. Now we had things happen on the ranch that um, two of our folks saw something in a high canopy of trees, uh, very tall trees, and in the upper canopy blocked out um, stars and limbs and something was commingled up there and then it disappeared, it moved on. The tunnel? <clears throat> well, in the tunnel was another one where somebody with night vision goggles could see it and the other person could not see it. And you'd switch them back and it was true that you had to have those goggles. If you weren't using those, you couldn't see that that light had turned into um, a structure that looked like a pipe and something crawled out of the pipe and walked away. You know? These things were real. I mean, they really did happen. Your employees, your scientists saw them. <clears throat> uh, there were physical, very physical manifestations, the calf mutilation, other cattle and animals that were destroyed or ca yeah. carved up. There were yeah. the destruction of the camera, the ice circle. I right. mean, a lot of things that were right. physical. Yeah. But in general, this was elusive. It would give you a glimpse, <clears throat> tease you a little bit, and then almost scoff and laugh. <laughs> well, it gets frustrating, yeah, because you have so many of these things happen. <clears throat> and where is it leading? Where, 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 what are you supposed to make of it? You know, after a while, it, it, it's not that it's, it gets, it gets to be uh, just frustrating that you could, these things would, would happen and maybe you can cause them to happen again, okay? Um, but you want to try to get to what is the point here. Tell us more. Talk to us. Communicate something in a way that we can understand that now we need to shift to do rather than just guessing and doing all that <clears throat> we wanted more we wanted to be able to shift and and change the communication kinds of format but it would uh, <clears throat> again we might I, you know we might have been just too impatient and maybe not creative enough in our thinking um, I also <clears throat> I was, I got very disturbed toward the end about something that happened to some of the government people. And I realized, uh, holy crap. Hitchhikers. Um, well, yeah, that, you know, and so hitchhikers being that you take, you take things home with you. Everybody took things home with them. You I did. took things to my house. Yeah. Things happened to my wife and, and to me, and different, different things. So everybody took things home. We all, you know, we did, but we didn't know that, gee, it was like going to be kind of permanent. <laughs> you know, we didn't accept, we didn't know that, you know, that it's going to stay with you for maybe the, for years and years or the rest of your life, who knows. Um, but the ones that, that <clears throat> bothered me a lot were where anybody got hurt or really disturbed, and it, not that it hap happened on the ranch, it was when they left the ranch, as you say, hitchhikers, and these were government people, and affected them. Very dramatic ways, though. <clears throat> very dramatic ways, very dramatic ways. Um, you know, and there's a cousin to that <clears throat> that we're facing but it, it's abated moment. It's abated at least for now. And this other survival topic, right? Very dramatic kind of things that we wanted to have reduced or stopped. So, but going back to the government people, that <clears throat> that uh, um, the the buyer came along at the right time. I uh, had decided I want wanted to. Take this off down, your plate. Yeah, take it off yeah. my plate, tone it down, and if necessary, just lock it up and forget about it. And next thing I know, you know, a buyer comes along, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. Um, so the, the, at, on the ranch, you had so many different kinds of phenomena. You had UFOs, you had cattle mutilations, you had trickster activity, the bulls in the trailer, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, you had, you know, creatures of different kinds 
uh, things that would take over people's minds, uh, the tunnel of light. Was it all the same? Bigfoot, I mean, was it all the same phenomena in different forms or was it <clears throat> like a crossroads for a bunch of different things? <clears throat> you got me, I don't know. I mean, we had fabulous conversations with deputy sheriffs that had unbelievable encounters that they saw things. I mean, just here, you know, they were, they were, they were uh, county officials and city officials and, and um, some really great, great people that, um, uh, like Frank Salisbury as a researcher did such a great job and his book is, is, is a terrific book. Um, there's so many, so many things happen that in the Uinta Basin in general and then specifically on certain ranches, and even more specifically on the Skinwalker Ranch. Uh, but all kinds of events and activities happened in broad daylight or at nighttime at all kinds of places throughout that whole area. And the police were, were very aware of these things, and they had terrific encounters of their own. And we were told a lot of these stories. We interviewed a lot of people you know, in the area as researchers so that we had a good idea of what other ranchers were encountering. Was it just us? No, it wasn't just us. It wasn't just this 480 acres on Skinwalker Ranch. <clears throat> it was peripheral to that ranch as well. It, things were happening all over the place. <clears throat> I mean, so really, I mean, if you thought that it was the, the events on the Skinwalker Ranch were wild ass events, oh no, just go to the next ranch right next door and listen to their stories. And you want to hear some really bizarre ones, I, I'm thinking of them right now, yeah. you know, to our neighbors there. Uh, I think it was the- Garcia. Yeah, I wasn't going to say that okay. name, but well, anyway, yeah, yeah, okay, so it's out. But anyway, yeah, them. I mean, they, they had some incredible kinds of stuff happen and, and, and kinds of- uh, Scary, spooky. Well, yeah, because yeah. it's not like your everyday drive on a freeway, you know, to, you know, that, um, so, um, yeah, there was a, the menu never seemed to stop. And, and it, was, it was kind of funny in that the same exact event usually did not ever happen. You know, that, that, that was a rarity, you know, that you could have the same kind of thing repeat itself so that you could set up um, methods to be able to equate and evaluate so you could repeat it. Right, that's what you want to do yeah. in a laboratory is have repetition, right, and and be able to to control, and have a have have something else that's a that's a control sample and something else here that that isn't and not there. Uh, no. no, no, it made it very. Ever figure out why there? I mean, does it have something to do with the proximity to the Native Americans who were kind of spooked uh, about the place? Yeah, but <clears throat> but the American Indians been all over this this country and. Uh, uh, and, 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 and strange things have happened all over the place, but you can't say necessarily that, that you can, you, you can uh, ascribe this to, to uh, 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 people that were indigenous to the area historically, or is it geology, or, or because of, of fossils there. Nobody knows. It's you looked at all that stuff. Any, well, anybody, it's anybody's guess is as good as anybody else's guess is what it boils down to. By the way, I'm 132nd Cherokee, so well, that's probably for it. what it's worth. Uh, before we leave this, though, the the incidents that happened to you, to your wife, to uh, to Colum, to me, the you know, it, you bring it home. Um, how how does everybody handle that? I mean, is it <coughs> spooky at the time, and do you draw the connection that it's ranch related? <clears throat> yes and no. If the events hadn't happened very often prior to the ranch, then it's not ranch connected. But they did happen. And they did, where we lived with my wife and I. We had a, a poltergeist event one time that was really fun and, and very different, and that was before I ever acquired the ranch. My, my wife was a, a, was a very strong, and probably still is in spirit, person. And so she took them in stride. She had a full manifestation of a, of a, a apparition, a human form apparition in, in the bedroom and looking at her. And uh, this, was a, this was a holy cow. And she happened to tell me, kind of like, oh, well, uh, 
this is while you were gone, this is, this is what happened here, a manifestation of this. I've heard this, this kind of thing many times through other people, and, um, um, <clears throat> and recently. Um, and, uh, and she felt the bed depress as there was a curiosity going on because of the facial features were distinctive enough to be able to, to the, as though, who are you and what are you doing here coming from the manifestation from the apparition, looking at her, all right? And, and <clears throat> torso up was kind of what was manifested and being able to see and feel the, the mattress being depressed as is as, as looking at you, wondering, who are you? That kind of look on the face. What are you doing here? You know, when it, usually you think it would be the opposite direction. Yeah. Who the hell are you? Was she freaked out? <clears throat> no. No, she wasn't. She would, she would have a, there was a bar of light. So this was not normal in the, in the survival <clears throat> research, but maybe in the ET that was between her pillows. A bar of light. It wasn't coming in from shutters or blinds or anything from the room or any kind of other light source. You could, you could cover it, put the pillows down, and the bar would not be reflected on the surface of the, of the object above it, on the second pillow. It only happened when you did this. And she did that and said, oh, well. And then she said, I said, well, what did you do? Well, I went to sleep. 